Compact and mid-size crossover SUVs account for a healthy percentage of most premium brand sales. A roomy and handsome cabin, generous cargo capacity, refined driving dynamics, and a sure-footed nature in inclement weather are the key reasons these rigs are so popular. And fighting for a piece of this large pie is the 2015 Cadillac SRX. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now this generation of the SRX started back in 2010 and that was just about five years ago and then the first generation was actually introduced in 03 as a 2004 model. It didn't really sell that well compared to this second generation and I think that's because um, of how big the first generation was. It was it looked like a station wagon but this one looks more like a crossover. Now as far as styling goes on the vehicle it looks pretty good in my opinion however it is getting slightly dated I have to say especially when it comes to the front and it doesn't really have Cadillac's new design language this is kind of their 2000s design language but it still works you know it still looks pretty cutting edge when it comes to the styling now coming to the key fob design here I love the key fob design really high quality looking very high quality feel too you have your unlock lock to release your trunk tailgate and then your remote engine start and then your panic buttons right there now essentially the big news for the 2015 model year is that the SRX sees a handful of equipment changes the most notable being that it now offers an in-car internet connectivity via a 4G Wi-Fi system also this SRX we have here is the performance collection with all-wheel drive and it comes equipped with the 3.6 liter V6. Now it is a Terra Mocha metallic exterior with smart key access on all four doors. And then you do have a tan leather interior. Power driver seat, power climb, power lumbar of course, memory seat settings for two people. Now stepping on into the interior, as you can see it's a very accommodating interior design here. Looks very luxurious, very high quality. Step in height is also pretty low too. That is a strength of a compact crossover. I just love this interior design. Cadillac has definitely really stepped up their game in the last few years. Now you do have push button ignition. Just put your foot on the brake of course and hit the button to start. And like I said, what you're hearing is that 3.6 liter V6. Full leather wrapped steering wheel, of course. Now coming to your transmission, pretty standard stuff here. You have a six speed automatic, manual shiftability, electronic parking brake as well. And then putting the vehicle into reverse displays your rear view camera with guidance lines too. And then it also does have trajectory. And then if you get too close to something in the rear, the seat will actually vibrate to warn you. Pretty interesting feature there. And then you also do have your parking sensors button right there. You can turn that off or on. And let's go ahead and turn on the lights and the hazards as well. Automatic driver side window. And let's go ahead and pop up the hood and check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors, LED turn signals on the sides right there, and they look like fangs, pretty interesting. By Xenon headlights with LED daytime running lights. And you do have front parking sensors and halogen fog lights. Pretty bold looking front end, not bad looking at all. Now under the hood here, like I said, you have a 3.6 liter V6. Now essentially every SRX is gonna come with this powertrain. All wheel drive is optional. 
and you're looking at EPA estimates of a okay 16 in the city and 23 on the highway. However, this powertrain is pretty powerful, producing 308 horses at 6,800 RPM and 265 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM. Pretty healthy numbers right there. It also does have variable valve timing and direct injection, and paired with the six-speed automatic, it is a decent responsive pair here. Now trims of the SRX start at the standard model, which starts at $37,605. The luxury model starts at $43,640. The performance, like how we have here, starts at $46,030. And then the premium model, which starts at $48,920. Now competitors of the SRX are essentially the BMW X3, the Audi Q5, as well as the Acura RDX, then you have the Lexus RX and the Lexus NX too. And then you also do have the Mercedes-Benz GLK as well as the new Lincoln MKC. Now I do like these 20 inch trims. They do have a pretty nice looking design to them. Pretty unique looking. Now like I said, EPA estimates are 16 in the city and 23 on the highway total vehicle price for this particular one is $50,925. Now coming to the rear you have roof rails on the top right there, LED tail lamps, dual exhaust tips as well, rear parking sensors, rear window wiper, rear window defroster of course. And then you can really unmistakably tell it's a Cadillac by the tail light design. Pretty good looking though. And then the SRX4 stands for that it has all wheel drive. Of course, all of your basic power necessities power windows right here, power mirrors, power door locks chrome door handles, nice soft touch armrest of course, what you would expect from a luxury car. And let's go ahead and see how that 3.6 liter V6 sounds. Now even though we have the performance model here, this isn't a vehicle you want to go roaring through your neighborhood with. It's a very quiet powertrain overall. And it's mainly used for the cabin to be very hush and quiet and very comfortable. It's not a performance car here, even though they call it the performance model. Now essentially what the performance model adds over the other trims is that it comes with a sport tuned suspension, adaptive dampers all on the all wheel drive models only, and then you have variable effort power steering and then adaptive by xenon headlights and then fog lights. Now the 3.6 liter V6 does move the 2015 SRX with assurance in most situations, though acceleration is better described as satisfying rather than exhilarating. The six-speed automatic transmission is a good companion as it changes gears in a smooth, unobtrusive manner. Occasionally, it is a little slow to downshift during highway passing maneuvers, however. Now, you're likely to be surprised by the crispness of the SRX's handling coupled with this crossover SUV's comfortable ride. If you regularly seek out back roads, I recommend an all-wheel drive performance or premium version of the SRX as they do feature quicker, sportier steering and adaptive 
suspension that together gives it an extra measure of capability around turns. Now like I said, this cabin design is a very stylish and beautiful design here. I love this cabin of the SRX. And of course, build quality and materials are top notch. Nice soft touch materials on the upper door panel, mid door panel, armrest, dashboard, nice and stitched. Everything is well put together and it's not overly padded and it's just the right nice amount of padding. It just feels very solid, kind of like how a German car is. Um, Everything is well put together, you know. Cadillac has definitely come a long way, like how I said. Now, just like the whole cabin design of the SRX, I love the steering wheel design here. And I really love the steering wheel controls. That's what I mainly love about the steering wheel. But I do like the wood grain and then the metallic trim to give it more contrast. And it doesn't look dull at all. But coming to your controls over here, you have your voice recognition button right there. Your adaptive cruise control and then your Bluetooth phone control and then your heated steering wheel right there coming over here you have your steering wheel mounted all your controls your volume up and down and then right here you have your controls for your little TFT center screen right there which I would get to in just a second now the steering wheel is also manual tilting and telescoping even though this car costs fifty thousand dollars I kind of expect power tilt and telescoping and then coming right here, you also do have power adjustable pedals. So pretty interesting that they do give you power adjustable pedals, but not a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Now coming up here, you have your auto dimming rear view mirror, OnStar SOS Safety Connect, tier illumination lighting. Also a full ultra view sunroof. Very large. Definitely opens up the cabin. Make it feel more airy inside of here. Very nice. Now coming down here, you have a little storage cubby. And you will find a 12 volt power outlet. Right here you have your lane departure warning button, parking sensors, and your eco button for saving fuel. Cup holders, of course. And then your center console. And then down there is where you will find your USB port, aux input, and then another 12 volt power outlet. Center console storage can be a little bit better, but it's decent. Now, as far as the seats go, the seats are a little bit on the firm side, I have to say. The support isn't all that great, however thigh support is pretty good, it's just the side bolstering doesn't give you that much support. And then it's just a little bit firm for my taste. But you do have a manual thigh extension at least right there. Now coming to the gauges here, I love the gauges, however in other Cadillacs they do use a full on digital gauge cluster, I would love to see that, but these work pretty well overall. But you do have this little TFT center screen display right here and I love it for the most part great rendering here but basically it's going to show you various amounts of vehicle information including your fuel range you can also change the settings on here too it also shows if you have a phone connected it's kind of like a mini Cadillac Q interface and then it shows what radio station you're on as well then your direction of travel digital speedometer too and you could change your units, info pages too. You can look at your recent calls on your phone and your contacts. And then browse your media or go to your favorites. Pretty nice. Overall, it works really well. Now, coming to your center stack controls here. Now, basically, this portion right here is all of your AC controls and then just this top portion is for your Cadillac Q system which I'll get to in just a second. Now this center stack is pretty much mainly used in all of other all the other Cadillacs and has been heavily criticized because of the responsiveness of them. They're all not all that great and it's kind of like how when my Ford Touch, my Lincoln Touch came out with their system and how it wasn't that responsive. But sometimes when I want to click 
on the button that I want. Sometimes it's kind of delayed at times and then sometimes it doesn't even work. But basically you have your temperatures right here, your fan speeds, and then your rear window defroster, front window defroster, and then your heated seats as well. But this is not really a good system to use on a daily basis if you're really trying to keep your eyes on the road. And then you have your optical disk drive right here. Now coming to this main interface here, you have Cadillac's Q system. Now the best part about this system is actually probably the rendering and the graphics of it. Other than that, it's actually pretty bad. The loading times are not that great and the responsiveness of the touchscreen is pretty bad too compared to a lot of different infotainment systems. Now compared to Chevrolet's MyLink system, it has basically the same structure as Chevrolet's MyLink, but Chevrolet's MyLink is a lot better in terms of its responsiveness and then the loading times. And that's probably the biggest criticism of Cadillac's Q, and it's kind of hard to use on a daily basis. Now, of course, to your different me coming to your different media sources, you have all of your different media sources, including Bluetooth, streaming audio, basically all the norm, uh, your auxiliary input, USB port, your optical disk drive right here, AM, FM, XM, satellite radio, nothing too out of the ordinary here. Pandora, of course, too, through your smartphone connection. You also do have Bluetooth hands-free calling. And then you have your weather right there. As you can see, when I just clicked on weather, loading time is pretty dismal. And then it gives you a five-day forecast, or you could do 36-hour or hourly. And then you can zoom in and out. So they just really need to work on the loading times and then the responsiveness, too. Climate right here. This controls your temperatures as well as your fan speeds. And then you have your different zones right here. And then you do have SMS, your text messaging function. And then coming to your nav, the rendering of it is pretty good. You do have 3D buildings too. And then of course you can enter in your destination by voice. Of course you do have live traffic as well. You can change the different map views too. Coming to your settings, you can change many different settings. Language, radio, time and date, valet mode. All of that good stuff. Change the display a little bit. Software information. Just a bunch of different settings. Then you have your OnStar right here. But overall, they just really need to work on the loading times and the responsiveness, like how I said. That's all they need to work on. Otherwise, it's a great system. Now, you also do have a Bose premium audio sound system in this car, and it does sound pretty good overall. So, the Cadillac Q system is a good idea overall, but the menu is a little unintuitive, and I do prefer most other electronic interfaces in this segment over the Cadillac Q system. Now, as far as visibility goes inside of this vehicle here, the A pillar is pretty thick I have to say overall. Glass area can be a little bit better and outward visibility as well. And then the worst part is actually the rearward visibility. It's actually hard to see out but at least a rear view camera does come standard. Alrighty and let's go ahead and shut down the SRX. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle including the cargo capacity as well as the rear seat space. Now coming to your tailgate opener right here, your switch, it's actually pretty interesting. I've never seen a crossover do this before. This is the only crossover I've ever seen have this kind of switch for your tailgate opener. But um, you can either open it three quarters of the way or all the way up and then off too. So it's a pretty interesting little neat feature that the SRX does have. And then you just press the button. Easy as that. Now coming back here, the cargo capacity does lack compared to some of its rivals like the Acura RDX as well as the BMW X3. 
However, the rear seats do fold down, of course, by pulling the little levers on the seats. But what the Acura RDX actually offers is that the levers are actually located right here, and then it makes it actually very convenient compared to the levers being on the seats. But at least you do have a power tailgate. Now build quality and materials do follow through in the rear. Pretty nice. Chrome door handles too. Now also what it's lacking in is the rear seat passenger space. This is not the most roomiest compact crossover. If you're looking for a more roomier crossover, the Acura RDX again is going to be a lot better. But you do have dual map pockets back here, rear air vents, a 12 volt power outlet, and a little storage cubby. And rear center armrest with storage and cup holders. Thigh support can be a lot better, however, I am lacking a decent amount of thigh support. All right. Full power passenger seat with power recline and power lumbar. Your glove box nice and damped and lined with felt. And you do have a shelf. Alrighty. So the 2015 Cadillac SRX is a solid choice for an entry level luxury crossover, especially if you're looking for one that's well stocked with many safety features and that has a very high quality and stylish cabin design. However, competitors do offer a little bit more powerful and efficient engine options though and in many cases they do a better job of integrating technology inside of their cabins and they also do have much more greater cargo capacity as well as rear seat legroom inside of their cabins so remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews